Hello artists and welcome. Many of you have been telling me how much you've been enjoying learning about modern and contemporary sculptors. This week I thought I would push it on a little bit further to think about soft sculptures. We're going to find out about the work of an Indian female sculptor called Merlini Mukherjee. She uses incredible, colourful woven materials to merge together nature and Hindu gods and goddesses um, in lots of fascinating ways. It is a sight to behold. I can't wait for you to discover her work and we'll be taking a look at how you can make a miniature scale soft sculpture of your own. Without further ado, let's step into her fascinating world. Mukherjee was an incredible artist and as I mentioned it's her work in sculpture that she was known for. Born on March 22nd 1949 in Mumbai, India, she was the daughter of two already very famous artists in their own right, Binod Bihari and Leela Mukherjee. Growing up in this artistic environment, it's no surprise that she developed a passion for art from a very young age and went on to study at a famous university in Baroda where she got the chance to explore lots of different artistic styles and ways of working. But it was from the 1970s that Mukherjee gained a reputation for her unique sculptures, often using unusual materials. Instead of marble or wood, which many other sculptors have used historically, she used natural fibres like hemp, as well as bronze and ceramics. So her artworks, we can say, are distinctive because it's about a fusion, a coming together of traditional Indian craft techniques with this modern, more abstract aesthetic idea coming through. The point being, Mukherjee's work isn't representational. It's not about making things look like they are in reality, but it's also not about being totally abstract and fantastical. It is somewhere in between. You will see different things in her artworks. Her sculptures often challenge normal or conventional ideas of what is beauty and what is artful they invite us to really think instead about how the human body, nature and more are all in connect interconnected. What do you see here, for example? A sleepy volcano? A door to the underworld? Let's look now at some of her really iconic totemic sculptures. Totems are tall, they're vertical sculptures that often represent a symbolical story or one that's got spiritual importance. Mukherjee's woven totem sculptures were inspired by Hindu and tribal gods and goddesses. And that allowed her to get, just dig into the rich cultural and mythological tapestry of her India. By incorporating gods into her work. She not only celebrated her cultural heritage, but it brings a kind of divine energy to her sculptures. How do you size them? How do her colours make you feel? And which colours would you use to represent nature? These soft sculptures by Mukherjee were known by their towering presence. You can't escape them. They are proud to be there. They are even intimidating. Their intricate details matter too. And beyond all this, they have this sense of otherworldliness, more than humanness, a sense of spirituality. And it's the combination of traditional Indian craft with this more modern, semi-abstract style that cements her sculptures in a timeless history in art. She passed away in 2015, age 65, leaving behind an important legacy in the world of contemporary Indian art. And her work continues to inspire and captivate audiences. 
For you, exploring Ricardo sculptures could be a fascinating journey into a world of imagination, creativity, and the boundless possibilities of expression. And today I show you how to make your own soft sculpture, inspired in part by Mukherjee's passion for nature. You will need cardboard, a pencil, some scissors with adult permission, glue, wool in two or three different colors, some felt and twigs, which are optional. Let's take a look. It's important to have six pieces of card as I showed you. What you want to do is draw an identical animal shape. I've chosen an elephant here without its ears on the cardboard six times and carefully then cut it out. Next, cut the legs off two of the cardboard elephants and cut the trunks off two different cardboard elephants. After that, you stack the six cardboard shapes. So you've gotten rid of the extra legs and extra trunks that you've cut off. Stack the six shapes and glue them together. There's an order to this. Trunkless elephant, complete elephant, legless elephant, legless elephant, complete elephant, trunkless elephant. You might want to replay that part of the video a few times to get the order right. Now it's time for your wool or yarn. It doesn't matter if you want to choose two, three or four pieces of different coloured wool. The main thing is to line them up together and then start to wrap them around the elephant's body once. I've started with the leg and then up into the body. It doesn't matter but you'll find that the hard one to do, the hard one to get around is its bottom because of that curve. So um, take your time. And it might be an idea to use different colours of yarn wool for different body parts. So doing the trunk or the head in a strikingly different colour as I'm attempting here. That bold purple contrasting the limey green and zingy pink. Tie a knot to secure your bases um, and then keep wrapping them around the body again and again and then again until you can't see the cardboard anymore. And once you're finished, tie a double knot to secure the yarn on the sculpture. Why not use any leftover wool you have with a couple of lollipop sticks or twigs and do a bit of yarn winding just for fun. Um, you could turn them into a butterfly if you want to crisscross over, keep going until the wings are complete. But it's also just lovely to wind with no idea of what's in store. Enjoy artists and send your photos to share at londonsoutharthub.org.